Hello guys, here we are, episode two. Um, we're gonna be doing this one on my mom's Cadillac CTS wagon. Uh, 3.6 liter, not a V, unfortunately. Um, but maybe a V, someday. I mean, that's kind of why me and my dad bought this car. Um, we can dive into that a little bit later. I'm gonna move the car actually over here. I just moved it here to take a couple of pictures. Um, kind of a cool spot, right? So here we are, here's the car. We're down here at the Port of Los Angeles at Warehouse One. Um, really cool spot to take some pictures, guys. I mean, if you guys are trying to do anything, really pretty place. Um, the hospital ship's actually here still. Maybe I'll get some video footage of that while we're uh, headed out here. But yeah, episode two. We're going to be doing it on my mom's Cadillac CTS wagon. All right, um, let's hop in the car here and... Uh, We'll go ahead and uh, move over into the shade because it is like 90 something degrees out here right now. Uh, let's take a look. How hot is it? It's 92 degrees and it is what, 5 o'clock in the afternoon? Uh -oh, it's okay. Navigation up. I always drive with this down, guys. I hate it up. It drives me crazy. Oh, they don't actually put a time on there. That's funny. So you gotta learn how to tell clock again, guys. Little clock here. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit after five, four, five o'clock. A little bit after five o'clock now. Um, but yeah, here we are, beautiful Port of Los Angeles, guys. So, let's go for a drive here. Um, so, like I said, we're gonna move over here into the shade, and we'll. Uh, do this thing because it was hot over there and one thing about me is you gotta notice I go to Arizona a lot too and for some reason Arizona heat is completely different than Southern California heat and uh, I'm not a fan to say the least so here we are we are in the shade um, we'll go ahead and uh, start the video here on the uh, overview of the outside of the car and uh, I'll see you guys in a second, all right? Episode two, like I was saying, um, we're gonna go ahead and do my mom's Cadillac CTS wagon. Um, no, it is not a V. Yes, it has a V hood. Yes, I know it's not perfect. Yes, I also paid less than $10,000 for it. Um, it's a 2012. It is by no means perfect. It has 41,000 miles on it. And I paid a lot less than $10,000 actually for this car um, with my dad, of course. We both have a random car obsession that is not at all fixable and we just keep feeding it. So um, we bought this thing for my mom. She was complaining that we have too many hoopties and air conditionings don't work in some things. And it's, our, it's understandable. I mean, she is a higher up nurse and she does deserve to drive something a little bit nicer than me and my dad what me and my dad deal with um so this is her car we bought for her low mileage like i said 41,000 miles um but it's a 3.6 liter dual overhead cam cts wagon that was wrecked so this car is like i said by no means perfect um one thing i do want everybody to know is these cars if you think these were supposed to be okay, they're not. Every single one I've seen, those they're doing that. It's just something to do with that plastic, and they probably didn't give it enough of a, a degree on that. So when they started to deform and dry out, the plastic's starting to pick up, and it's just starting to do what all GM plastics do over 10, 15, 20 years. And like all GM products, I'm sure you'll be replacing some of these things uh, later in life. So... If you're like me, start hoarding parts for things because when you have them hoarded, you don't have to go find them later. <laughs> um, but back to the car anyways. So this car, I have a sneaking suspicion that somebody took this car, was going way too fast and curb slammed this thing on the right side of the car. I don't know what someone did do it, but it definitely is not correct. As you can tell, somebody went through and they bought a V hood for it. So. What me and my dad are probably going to do is we're actually going to get a V front end for it completely. And our eventual goal with this car, after my mom blows it up after a couple of hundred thousand miles, um, she drives a lot. So 
she goes through cars pretty quickly. So we're gonna take this car and we're hopefully gonna be putting the V8 into it. So I, w I would love to do the stick, but I can't even imagine how big of a nightmare that is. Um, it's just gotta be terrible. I mean, I can't even fathom how bad that is. Working on any of these new cars is just absolutely miserable. Um, you're gonna notice throughout these videos, I hate new cars. If it was made after like 1996, I'm just really good off of it. I'm not a fan. Um, just computers belong on desks, not in dashes. This is gonna be a common theme you're gonna hear from me. Um, I just, I don't like computers in my car, man. I, I, I work on computers all week, every day, all day. And let me tell you, the last thing I want to do with when I get home is more computers. And you'll hear that probably from all the car mechanic guys. Um, one of my favorite YouTube channels that I like to watch is Hoovy's Garage, as well as the, the Car Wizard. And the Car Wizard, as he's said in multiple of his videos, he hates working on cars on the weekends. You'd much rather spend time with your family and doing things you like to do. And you just don't want to do your job on the weekend. It's just not something you're trying to do. So. You're gonna hear me hate on computers and cars. You're totally entitled to your opinion. Yes, I get it. I'm a little bit un... Uh, I'm unhinged on it. I just, I don't like computers and cars. That is what it is. I mean, throttle body injection maybe, I'll give you, but I, that that's the most. I don't need anything more than that. But as you can tell, this car was um, definitely a little bit uh, loved on before in its very early 40,000 miles. Um, lower rockers have been replaced, not very well in my opinion, but we'll figure that out. Like I said, the front has some fitment issues. Um, I'm going with it something to do with the bumper. Uh, it's missing a few of the tabbies and stuff like that. We'll pop the hood on it here in a second and go through it. But um, this wheel here is my telltale sign, as well as the bumper fitment here, as you can tell. Um, just not perfect. It's not horrible, but... Yeah, this wheel's just rough though. Like, I need to find a wheel. So, if anybody has a wheel or knows of a set of wheels cheap for a CTS wagon or just a CTS in general, I guess, let me know. Um, I only want stock wheels. I don't really like putting aftermarket wheels on things. Uh, very seldomly uh, do I like doing that. Um, ironically, we used to do a lot of wheel company work, which is really funny. But um, yeah, not a fan of really doing aftermarket wheels on cars per se um, but yeah, this thing looks pretty sick guys I mean I'm really happy with it it's not as cool as my other wagon for sure um, my unicorn is definitely way cooler and we'll do an episode on her uh, maybe we'll even get Brandon in on that episode too um, because he's the guy I actually bought the car from and he actually has one as well um, he has a alpine white wagon that is pretty cool so if you know what alpine white is you might know what brand i'm talking about so yeah let's go ahead and let's dive into this car a little bit and um let's check out a few of the things so here's the interior very clean like i said the car has forty-one thousand miles on it guys she is just pretty much immaculate as for cars and one thing i love about this car still is they still put an actual hatch handle on it my, i i couldn't believe that there's my backpack um but lots of cargo space in this car oh look my other phone is ringing let's go ahead and silence that um but yeah as for um the cargo space decent amount of cargo space um this bolt here guys on this c-pillar is insanely priced all this stuff cost me like $120 just to get that C-pillar put back on. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know if this car had the, the airbags go off, but one other cool thing, this thing is so wild. I want you guys to take a look at this. Um, just really wild. So you pull this up and there is a little tray here. Let's see, there it is. So I want everybody to put down in the comments what they think of that is. It does have wires going to it. It is sitting upside down right now. And there is supposed to be a spare tire in here. We did not get the spare tire with this car, unfortunately. Um, but what can you do? You, know, you pay top pricing for it. So I guess some things are about to be missing. But um, 
as for the interior of this car, guys, it is just immaculate. And like the Escalades, it does have a knob in the left corner, uh, left door hand, front door, uh, that you can change how high that goes. My mom likes to keep it at three quarter because she's five feet, so um, that's a little tall for her to try to hit the button all the way over here. So we'd usually do a three quarter thing when she's driving it. Um, missing a parking sensor cover because I think they took taking the parking sensors out of the car. Luckily, I think I have a set of them from my Escalade from when my dad ripped the uh, bumper off of that a couple years ago. Um, we repaired that, but yeah. As for the car inside, it is, it's a pretty nice car. Like, not bad. One thing I really hate about GM in these years is you make such a big car and you make the front so good. Like, look at the front seat of this. It is massive. Like, but you get to the back seat now and it's like you're riding in the back of a Porsche. Like, come on guys. Let's do a little bit better than that. But what can you do there? I mean, I don't think these cars were that, I know they were a little bit overpriced still. I think they were in the mid fifties when the uh, wagon came out. But as I said, all in all, it's a pretty nice, nice car. Um, here we are in it. I guess I can start it up for you. Um, I really, really, really love that this car still has a key. I love it. I hate fobs. It's the stupidest thing ever. I paid for a car. I want a key, not something. Um, like all my other cars, uh, the happy light is on. Um, just, just, just makes you feel good inside, you know? So just, you gotta make sure that that light's always with you. Um, in this case, I have scanned it. I have a small air leak in the EVAP system, it says. The car just passed mod, so I really don't care. I'll deal with it when I deal with it, and yeah. But, yeah, I mean, really nice instrument cluster. Not a lot of stuff. I love this that they did this with this, because obviously you're 2012 now. We have to have some form of screening in the land of what people and the consumer wants, and I get that. And I love that Cadillac actually went through and figured out how to make this thing disappear. I think Bentley made this happen also, as well as the early Benzes with the, with the single screen before they went to the, the obnoxious 21 inch or whatever that is in the new uh, S classes. It, it's just too much. It's too much screen. Um, but I love that you can go up and down with this thing. I mean, then you have a full thing. I hate that I can't change between my AM, FM, and XM. When it's in the down position, that's a little annoying, but what can you do? Computer programmers can only do so much for every person. Um, but have the analog clock here, which is really cool. It's 92 degrees here in a quarantine day, whatever we're at here at the end of April. I think it's April 24th today. Um, you're definitely gonna notice my days are cross filming on some of these cars because I'm driving a couple of different cars every day because I can. Um, I'm trying to keep everything running a little bit better. Um, seniors driving a couple things today. I think he took uh, his funky car truck thing. And no, I'm not talking about an El Camino or a uh, Ranchero or a U. I'd love a U. People in Australia, if you ever watch this or hear from me, jog down. I'm, I'm looking for a U or like a, a Commodore SS, like the V, the five O with the six, with the five speed manual. Wrong side drive. That's like a really cool car that I've always really wanted. Um, but air conditioning works this car. Um, one thing I've noticed, it doesn't have cool seats, so I think that might have been a V or an option. Um, but yeah, no cool seats here um, on either side. Lots of buttons for just a lot of things. I, I, I don't understand why, but it's just a lot going on. My mom loves cows, so she has her cow up there, and uh, we're cat people, so had everything everywhere but this thing sounds pretty good when you rev it I mean I mean it's not horrible obviously you can't take it to the moon because it's all electronically controlled but not a bad little car I don't like the Taptronic thing that goes to the right I think that's really stupid um, 
Why would you want to go to the right? I mean, I get the down to one, up to six, but I want to come this way, people. Like, WTF. I don't want to go away from me to start shifting. Like, what are we going, between five and six? I mean, Jesus. Um, but that's my one complaint on the shifter. But as for the cockpit, this car is actually pretty comfortable in a whole, um, Head spacing is nice. This sunroof is actually really freaking cool. Um, so it has the panoramic shade, which you can kind of see through, which is a little lame, but it's whatever. But it disappears completely. And then you can go back with the sunroof. And it's only the first pane, but it's, it's kind of nice. I mean, it's cool having the sunroof be able to open and then still being to see through. Um, but really elegant dash actually in this car too. Really kind of reminds you of maybe like a mid 2000s Benz, like that C class and the E class uh, dash. Just just a really nice, clean, elegant looking dash here. Um, still also have a manual parking brake. I think that's what this is. Uh, I think if you had a V or a nicer model, it, the, it had the electric parking brake there. Uh, one thing I did have to get off of Amazon, these were pretty cool. Um, if you're like my mom and drink coffee and spill everything all over the place, these have been great for me because I just wipe those off and uh, wash them off in the sink and I don't have to deal with all the coffee that she spills everywhere. Like all the time, in every car. Like, oh my god, it's terrible. Look at this little guy. Little light green Mercedes, CLK. Uh, it's only a 320 though. I would love a 430 of one of those. Those cars are actually kind of cool. Um, but yeah, this car has, uh, like I was telling you, 3.6 liter dual overhead cam motor. Um, really quiet. Like, I, I'm really kind of impressed with this car, with how quiet it is and how much power it has. I think this thing would keep up with the C5 vet, definitely on the bottom end. Top end, my C5's got it for sure. Um, but bottom end this thing's quicker i think i mean that thing also has a dog leg 315 or whatever that came in the automatics in 99 it's garbage if you have one of those cars take your rear end out throw it away and put a z06 rear end in it you'll love your life um it's just the way to go but yeah this car uh, it, it's not a bad little car guys i mean you could find them they're out there and if it's not perfect like i was saying by any means but it's a it's a nice little daily for my mom and like I said the AC works and she drives a lot so it's been nice having this little 3.6 liter and it does not eat a lot of gas like I am used to I am used to gas just disappearing in my life all of the time so here it is and I love these seats also I just want to come back into here these seats are like really nice They're surprisingly comfortable and cushy still Especially for garbage mid-2000s GM seats. I mean, they are just GM, guys. I, I love you. I I I'm a Chevy thumper for life. But you guys, if uh, I wouldn't buy anything new. Let's just... And, and I'm going to just put it like that for everything. I just wouldn't buy anything new. I mean, ever. They're, they're terrible. Cars are just so garbage. I mean... The screens of have, have you been in a Tesla? Oh my gosh, the screen in that thing is crazy. But one thing I do want, I do want the Tesla, but I'm gonna, I do want to do an LS swap into that. That is my one LS swap that I will give you. I think that would be the coolest thing to do, like a twin turbo Tesla setup, like just do like an LS nine supercharged twin turbo, like 2,000 horsepower. I think that would be just the coolest thing and make a Tesla that could potentially go up against a Tesla and beat a Tesla that isn't a Tesla. So, yeah. But the uh, 2012 Cadillac CTS wagon. All right, guys, here we are again. Um, we're in the car, it's running. It's nice and cool out. Um, let's go for a drive to this thing and uh, maybe turn on some tunes on the XM radio here. Oh, all of the small things and I love this thing it has the bow speakers it sounds great I mean, it goes
Eight-year-old speaker, Bose, not bad. I mean, I remember Bose in my C4 Corvettes. And that just guarantees you're gonna have speakers that don't work, slash your battery's gonna drain. <laughs> That's all the Bose system meant in those cars. But um, I'm gonna stop hating on my cars and let's go for a drive in this thing. Um, we're still shooting on my iPhone, I'm sorry. My sister has all the GoPro stuff. She said she's gonna bring it over. So maybe episode three or four, I don't know. We'll see what I drive. Tomorrow's Saturday, so maybe we'll do another episode with my dad. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll do a Camaro. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but we're driving here, taking the Camaro or the uh, CTS out here. CTS wagon, guys. It's a, uh, quite an interesting little car here. I'm not gonna lie. Let's drive up over here. This is a cool little spot. I don't know. I think we can drive up here, and I think that's water right there, everybody. I'm not going to lie. That is, that's a water burst right there. Um, as I was saying, there's all kinds of cool little spots. I'm actually going to stop right here. I'm just going to take a couple of pictures of this car, because I don't really have a lot of pictures of it yet. Here's my mom's cow again. I don't know what the cow's name is, but the car's name is Jezebel. Um, that's what she named it, because... She knows it was a cheap car and she knows that it wasn't perfect. So she figured Jezebel was kind of a scandalous name. So she named the car Jezebel. Um, but here she is, guys. I mean, it's a cool car. We're at um, verse 58, 59, and 60 here at the San Pedro, San Pedro Port. Uh, a couple of bikes. Kind of cool. Um, like I said, quarantine has been, I don't want to say good for the car culture, but. People are getting their things running, guys. It is, it, it's been really cool seeing a lot of these older cars out and about. Um, yeah, just uh, gonna take a couple of pictures here and I'll be right back. Hey guys, Darren here. Um, episode two in the Cadillac uh, continued. So we just took the pictures. Um, you just seen them. We're here at birth uh, 58, 59, and 60 uh, at the Port of LA. Uh, on the LA side, not on the San Pedro side, or I guess we're on the San Pedro side, not on the Long Beach side is what I want to say. Um, but we're pretty close to the USS Mercy that it, Mercy or Comfort? I don't know. I think we have the Comfort. The big hospital ship anyways, that is docked in LA for this crazy COVID-19 thing. Um, that boat is actually docked not that far away from here. Uh, pretty close to the USS Iowa, which is a pretty cool engineering feat within itself. Um, if you guys like engineering stuff and like boats, maybe we can talk to my one of my buddies. Uh, he actually works on the Liberty ship up in San Francisco. Maybe we can get him to do a tour with that thing. I don't know. Leave me some comments. Talk to me down below. Uh, just make sure you do hit that subscribe button it's down there somewhere, I guess. Um, I think it's by the, uh, the radio that pops up and down right now. Um, but also one thing on the Cadillac I also do love is I love this steering wheel actually. It feels very reminiscent of both my Escalade and the XLR. Um, just a nice wheel. Just in general, you know, like, you know when you have a bad wheel, um, one thing I don't like, the new steering square on the C8 Corvette. Not a fan. I do understand it is supposed to be faster and you can get into turns quicker, but I, We've now reinvented the wheel into a square. Congratulations, guys. Wheels are squares. Um, not a fan. Anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, Cadillac. We are in my mom's CGS wagon, which we got it on a bargain price. Um, nice car. Needed a little bit of work. We're still going to do a couple of things here and there, but all in all, it's a good running car. I might put a V bumper on the front and got a couple of little things to fix here and there, but. All in all, just a nice 41,000 mile example of a car that's been hit. <laughs> um, but as for the Cadillacs that I like, um, we actually currently right now have three Cadillacs. We, my dad has a 08 Escalade ESV that has a blown LQ9 LS motor. Um, probably spun the cam bearings, not 100% sure. Neither did that or a bad oil pump, but regardless, less than 150,000 miles on it. These things have gone wrong. I am not a fan of the LS motor guys. They are cool. 
They make a lot of power. They are not reliable. I mean, maybe the, the cast iron block ones, but when you start getting into the aluminum stuff, aluminum is not made to be stressed on. Like, it's, it's temperamental. It is not a 1970 big block Chevy that you can overheat 40 times. And it's good. It's just good. I mean, yes, it's not good for the car and it's not really good, but it's okay. You're going to most likely be okay. You don't have to be like, oh my God, did I warp ahead? Am I going to have bad head gaskets? Bringing me to my next point of the Cadillacs that I love. I love garbage Cadillacs. I cannot help it. But garbage Cadillacs are like my passion. Um, the North Star Motor it's trash guys it, it, it's in the early years they were just horrible um we're gonna start with my favorite car that it came in uh the 1993 cadillac alante it was bodied as, as it was a pina farina body that was built in italy that gm had custom 747s that were actually are pretty cool planes i would actually love to know where those planes went um I have a plane obsession also. My, my favorite, some of my favorite planes are the DC-3s and uh, C-46s. Um, so Buffalo Airways up in Canada, shout out to them. Mikey McBrien, your channel is one of the things that got me into airplanes. And Plane Savers it has to be one of the coolest channels. So if you like old planes and piston-driven things like your car that is in the air, these planes are awesome. McDonnell Douglas made the DC-3. Um, just awesome it, also known as the dakota over the pond um the planes are just awesome i got to fly in one in december if i ever make enough money i'm, I'm gonna buy one of those because just the the exhilarating thrill of being in a piston driven aircraft of that size a eh? that power a eh? but of that generation is just so cool and obviously not a pressurized cabin or anything uh, lower flying altitude. I think cruising speeds just like 150 miles an hour. It's like 148 knots, I think, is what they say the, uh, the cruising speed is on that plane. But really cool. Uh, I, I, I rant a lot. I'm sorry. We're getting off topic here. But anyways, Cadillacs. So the Alante brought in on modified 747s that GM actually would fly over to Italy, pick these bodies up, bring them over, assemble the book car here in America on the garbage drivetrain that they had assembled on these cars. Obviously, front-wheel drive vehicle. Don't know why they ever did that. I mean, you had such a good rear-wheel drive setup on the Seville's, the, the STS again that we're talking about from that generation. I don't know why you would have gone to that front-wheel drive. I mean, yes, the Eldorado, and yes, okay, I'll give you the, the front-wheel drive thing is cool, but the cars have horrible oversteer. Uh, just like the later 2000 Cadillac DTSs and the DeVilles of the 2000s. Um, I actually had a 2000 DeVille. Hated that I had to sell it, but horrible car. Just 2000, stay away from oh, 2000, 2001. Throw them away. Sell them for parts. The cars have water-cooled alternators. Like, who do you think you are? Audi? Like, and look at how wonderful they are the Audis. It's not that fun. It's not a good way to go. So, fine engineering from General Motors on that one. But, uh, like, 04, I believe they fixed that problem. So, my uh, XLR is actually an 05, I think. It's either 05 or 06, I forget. But, um, yeah, in 04, they fixed the head gasket problem. They finally figured out that they were using the wrong pitch bolts in the, in the blocks. And upon getting hot and... Whatever weird electrolysis things happened within the, there was a million things that went wrong with the cooling system in those cars. It was not just the head gaskets, just the stud bolts. There was a lot weird electrolysis things that could happen if you didn't properly change your antifreeze at the right intervals. This is right when Dex Cool started getting started, got, when you went from the green to the orange stuff. Just really weird things that GM kind of did on these cars that it was like, I, I appreciate the, the try of to be a high-end luxury car like Mercedes-Benz that was making in the S-Classes on the W240 chassis. And even the uh, E39 or E38, E38, E39? No, E38, um, the E38 7 Series 
uh, cars. Those cars were great cars. That, my, uh, that V8 in those cars was great. The V12 was a great car, great engine. Um, just really high-end, highly sophisticated systems that Cadillac was trying to like jam into these cars to make you feel better about buying this thing. But we're talking 93. So 93 was kind of the, I don't know, would you say the beginning, the middle of Cadillac going to trash? I mean, I don't know who their target market was. I don't know if it was still an older market, a market that just was like, hey, I drive Cadillacs. So I know the people that drove a Cadillac are going to come buy another Cadillac. But as for the cars that they made, they weren't very good cars. But the Elante, one of the coolest cars, uh, just from a manufacturing standpoint. And the car is really freaking cool. I mean, once you get a North Star dialed in and you do the head uh, studs and everything and get it dialed in, it's expensive. I get that. Yeah, when, when you're playing with Cadillac, just know you're playing with Mercedes pricing most likely on some of these newer cars. It's just a, what you're going to deal with. And if you're thinking you're going to get into one of these on the cheap, you can, but not in California. You're not going to make that car pass smog. You're not going to get that car to do what you need it to do here. It's just not a feasible thing. Um, unless you're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, which you can do. Um, I appreciate it. I, I think it's really cool. I mean, I love seeing some of these cars because they really were snapshots of their time um, from a technology standpoint. Like I said, I'm a computer person. So yes, I appreciate computers. Yes, I appreciate the technology and all the development and the engineering that goes into these cars. It is in it's incredible how much goes into these cars. I mean, there's an entire campus in Michigan that is dedicated to just developing these technologies at GM. I mean, you haven't even gotten into Ford and Ford's been doing some really cool things now and here we are in 2020. They actually bought Detroit's Grand Central Station and they're turning it into a campus for development, engineering and community revitalization. So just another cool thing that they're doing, I mean, that's one thing I love is getting the community involved and getting people into what you're doing and what your kind of vision for this stuff is. Um, another really cool bike. There's been some really cool bikes that keep driving by here. Um, but anyways, Cadillacs. So Elante, love that car. Um, STS from like 93, the first generation STSs, garbage cars, horrible cars. Same North Star motor. Just really cool styling though and then the second generation of that car in the early 2000s it was essentially a dts um i think the cage actually and all that uh subframe i think that whole subframe is the same i don't think there is a difference it is the same 4.6 liter north star motor um like i said you do want the later ones of those i think they made the sts and i think it was the sls at that point finally or might have turned into an sts before the sts that we all know uh, when they started cramming the North Star with the supercharger motor with the Vs. Um, that's the same generation as my XLR as well as the CTS-V. They got the six speed and the LS6, I think is what they called that. Um, the same generation like GTOs and things like that. That got the LS2. That was like what, right when the Corvette came out like 97 um, with the LS motors. I think Camaro's got that in, well, it was 97. Um, I think it was 98 actually on Marrows. They got right when they got into the catfish because i think 97 was still square headlight and then when you get into catfish land with the catfish headlights that's when they went to the ls motor 98 i believe correct me down in the comments i'm okay with that i don't care if i ever say something wrong correct me down below um i'm always willing to learn um but yeah um really cool car that sts um love the devilles also don't know why I'd love to have like a 99 Fleetwood DeVille or 98 Fleetwood DeVille. Uh, so this is not the Fleetwood Brome. That is a D body still. So I love one of those. Also, I'm looking for a burgundy one of those. I'd love burgundy on burgundy LT1. Same as an Impala essentially, but the car's like two feet longer. So it still maintained its D body status from Fisher. Um, following the old school ways. So B bodies were Caprices, D bodies were um, the, the Fleetwoods, uh, Cadillac, the XLR, that's actually a Y body, as a, same as a Corvette. So 
Um, you'll see a YX in that uh, VIN number, not a YY. Corvette will be a YY. That XLR is a YX um, because it's a Cadillac XLR. So it actually has a different VIN designation that came out of Bowling Green for that car. Really cool kind of assembly thing. Um, these cars, I believe, were Zeta platform cars um, at the time. So this is the Camaro, the SS, or not even the SS yet. It was the Caprice, the PPV. I don't think the SS had been quite imported into the U.S. yet. It was still being known as the G8 from Pontiac at that time, um, which essentially is the same freaking car. Um, I don't think there really is any difference whatsoever on that. Um, but as for other garbage Cadillacs I like, um, that later DTS is with the front, the, the front wheel drive. I don't know why, but they made that car in like 2010. I would love to get a black or a blue one of those. They're just really classy, really nice looking cars and just really represent kind of the technology of where they were from. And Cadillac did a good job at keeping them a little bit more watered down because I remember they did a case study and the old people did not like that the cars did not have keys. So if you actually drove a CTS coupe of this generation, you had a fob, but there was so many complaints, I guess, GM actually made a key mechanism on the side that you would still turn so you would feel like you're turning the car on. Crazy stuff, right? Um, just wild things that GM kind of came up with back then. Um, I'm gonna close this and make my air conditioning work a little bit better. Maybe you'll see me a little better too. Um, but yeah, oh, I always forget this is power. I went to go grab it in my hand. Um, but yeah, I like garbage Cadillacs. I can't help it. I'd love to get a Escalade, like a, a one before my dad's. My dad has an 08. I'd like like an 03 and 04, uh, one of the red ones or the same color as this car, uh, that kind of cream puffy color. I, I loved those trucks. They were just really nice. The 6.0 was a great motor before they went to the active fuel management stuff that really broke those cars. I mean, why you would try to make a V8 hybrid or V8 active fuel? I, I don't get it. I don't get it, guys. Like, it's like, what? Like, you've already made something that might break because of all the computers, and then let's add more computers. Like, we're not BMW, guys. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's hop in this thing. Um, let's go for a little drive on it and then we're gonna go ahead and finish this episode off I guess these episodes are gonna be like a half hour I'm sorry I guess put down in the comments if you like less more I I'll do what you guys do you guys are the ones kind of running the show I'm just here talking and about my crap um, I've got a lot of crap and I have a lot of interest so we can talk about planes we can talk about trains I mean I love trains. I have a big model train collector also. Um, I like electric antique trains. I like real trains. Um, one of the things I did kind of bump, get bummed out at this year is I didn't actually get to go see the 4014 revival of the big boy. Um, that was actually a Alco American Locomotive Corporation uh, locomotive that was made in the 40s. Um, it's called the big boy and it's a dual articulating steam engine that literally is the biggest train ever made and it's the most one of the most powerful trains ever made and just an engineering marvel and ed dickens up at up heritage took this thing from pomona i literally grew up seeing this thing at the pomona swap meet here in southern california and they took this train constructed temporary track and dragged it onto the main line and dragged it up to uh Omaha, I believe, is where the uh, UP's at. And they fixed this thing. It, it, it did a tour of the country this year and ran the rails of the entire United States. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I like. It's just really cool stuff. And like I said, I like planes. I got a buddy that works on uh, a Liberty ship. So if you guys are interested in that, I can talk to him. We can see maybe we can do a, a trip up there. Maybe we'll do a car with the boat. And I don't know. See what we do. We can do. I, I, like I said, I know quite a few people. I've been blessed that I have a lot of opportunities to know some of these people. Um, like I said, I collect a lot of crap, as you'll see. Um, you've seen my fine Camaro and my fine CTS wagon. Um, nothing I really have is perfect, and I love it like that because when you have perfect stuff, you're 
gonna be mad when it breaks or you're gonna be mad when you scratch it and you, that, that's not me I mean I, I, I drive my stuff to break it then I'll break it and then I'll fix it I don't sell my stuff as I said I'm not a big fan of selling things I've sold a few things and like I said I've regretted it ever since I sold the Cadillac I want that car back I'm probably gonna wind up getting another one of those um, the other car I got rid of recently I actually had a 91 Capri station wagon um, I love my wagons sorry um, but I had to get rid of that it was a 305 91 it was my grandpa's old car but it, it, it was clapped out guys it was rough um, so what I decided is once I get my garage built and once we get a little bit of space and get the lifts and everything I'm actually gonna go out and I'm, I'll buy a 96 fleet or a Roadmaster uh, the Buick that way we get the cool sunroof thing in there so we'll build that car out and it'll probably be a fi uh, a big block with a four speed or some something cool um, but yeah I guess these episodes are gonna be about a half hour long and tell me what you want to see like I said I have um, a whole bunch of stuff maybe we'll do one on one car that's not mine that is mine but it's actually my cousin's car uh, but it's living next to one of my cars at my grandma's house um, it was my other grandpa's car uh, when he passed away he actually left me a couple cars and left my cousin a really cool car maybe we'll do an episode on that thing um, I don't know we'll see um, we'll definitely do a couple episodes on building some stuff um, to, like I said today's Friday um, maybe I'll do an episode tomorrow we're gonna maybe work on my SS 454 pickup truck um, if we do that, we'll do some video and do some uh, vlogging, vlogging, whatever the hell you call this stuff. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that, and uh, we're going to have some fun with this, guys. Um, like I said, I really want to reach out to you, and it, it's quarantine. I'm going crazy. I can't go to the movies. I can't go to Disneyland. I can't go anywhere. They want me to wear a mask everywhere I go, which I don't know about all of you, but... I, I can't mask. It freaks me out. I get, I'm, I'm claustrophobic with things on my nose, I guess. Like, it freaks me out. Like, goggles in the ocean and stuff like that. I have to wear certain ones or I get... It freaks me out. I don't know. I, I don't get it. But I'm a weirdo. Can't help that. But let's take this thing out for a drive. We're going to go... Uh, maybe I'll go see, show you guys the battleship, uh, Iowa. And we'll drive past that. And like I said, the big boat's over here. All right, I guess I'm sure you guys want to see some form of pull on this thing. It, it's not the fastest, it's not the best, but you know, it's it's an all right little car. It's, it's a six cylinder, guys. Like, what do you want? It's a six cylinder from 2012. We're talking about a, almost a 10 year old V6. Um, clearly nothing special. Um, but uh, let's pull over here and uh, so go ahead and turn around. We're back here at Warehouse 1. Um, Warehouse 2 is clearly having some issues. This would be such a cool place to put like a burnout track or something. So I don't know if we want to figure out uh, how to buy that or something and get a coalition or a not-for-profit. Um, cool burnout spot. But let's throw this thing into manual mode and uh, we're in first now. Put it this way. That we Kind of see it. Uh, yeah, we'll do it that way. All right, and let's go. Like I said, it, it, it kind of giddy ups and goes, but it's nothing special. Um, yeah, here, check this thing out right here, guys. Look at this. Look at how cool. How cool would it be to just pave that and just make a giant burnout center? The things I think of, obviously completely unrealistic. I mean, I don't know, nothing's unrealistic, I guess. I mean, they said you couldn't close the country and they did that, so yeah. Um, somebody had some fun there. Um, I do not know if this car will burn out. I don't want to try, like I said, it's my mom's car. Um, if it was my car, I would have no problem breaking it, but 
I already have enough broken cars, so I don't need to break my mom's car also. And with my luck, it's a mid 2000s uh, GM product. And I will break it because I'm really good at that. Um, I love breaking things. And then I love fixing them again. And that's the fun of it. But yeah, we're, we're cruising along. We're going like 60 miles an hour here. Um, but it's, it's not bad. Uh, it's a nice little handling car. I think I do need to do a rotor on it because I think it's got a warped rotor or something. Uh, when you get on the brakes hard, I definitely have a little bit of a left left wheel vibration that I don't really like the feeling of. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll take that apart one episode. We'll, we'll, we'll start doing a little bit more videos on fixing things too. That way at least if you guys have the same car and you're working on things and you're afraid of breaking it, how about I break it first? <laughs> uh, um, no, I'm, I'm joking, but not really, but kind of. Um, yeah, here we are. There's the uh, St. Vincent Thomas Bridge or St. Thomas, Thomas Vincent. I don't know what it is. I don't live in LA. I live in Orange County. I go south, not north. Unless we're going way north. Um, but really cool area. One of my favorite areas to come take pictures at here in or, uh, LA. Um, very, very spoiled with the amount of places we can go down here to go take cool pictures and just see cool cars. I mean, we, as you've seen on episode one, there were, we had that Pontiac, that old Pontiac, that Continental, a slew of really cool bikes, um, that Rolls-Royce SUV. Um, but yeah, here we are. Uh, we're coming up on the Battleship Iowa. You can see the main masts over here right now. Um, and yeah, these are, um, I, I believe, these are merchant marine ships still now that it's operated by. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, let's go ahead and stop. We've got a uh, emergency here. Uh, I didn't even know there was a fire station there. I'm going to be honest. Wouldn't mind an old fire truck too. That would be kind of a cool thing to have. Completely unnecessary. And I would obviously need way more space. Um, but who knows? Life is uh, ever changing, so if I ever win the lottery or something, uh, then we'll buy a fire truck. We'll do an episode on a fire truck. Um, but yeah, here is the battleship Iowa down here in San Pedro. Uh, very important World War II ship. It actually sat in the same mothballs fleet that the O'Brien sat in, uh, the boat my buddy works on up in San Francisco that lives over at the wharf. Um, but here we are, we're passing the uh, hospital ship now. We're gonna be hopping on the bridge. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and finish the episode on the bridge, guys, to be honest. Uh, we've been talking here for like 40 minutes now. Uh, and I'm sure you're getting sick of hearing me babble. And it's a lot of psycho babble, as you can tell. Um, if you're watching this and you're enjoying it, uh, let me know if you enjoy the psycho babble, you want less psycho babble. Um, but yeah, but yeah, here's the hospital ship. Uh, down here in quarantine, uh, Eyewitness News is over here uh, right now. On Channel Seven, Disney News, everybody. <laughs> Disney owns the world. They're probably gonna yell at me for saying their name in this. I don't know. Walt Disney liked trains. I know that. I feel like Walt was a really cool guy, actually. Here we are, we are on the bridge. So, and yes, this is the same bridge Nicolas Cage quote unquote jumped and gone in 60 seconds. Um, no, there is no tow truck in front of me and no, we are not jumping my mom's Cadillac. But there is the hospital ship right there. You can clearly see it. It is massive. Um, that is the Mercy. So the Comfort is the one that is in New York. Um, and I believe it's actually going back to Virginia sometime soon. I don't know if Cuomo decided he was going to let it go or not, but yeah. Um, but yeah, here we are. Uh, Mom's Cadillac CTS wagon. And we are going over the bridge. And let's accelerate a little. And uh, we're on the bridge. And this was right about where they launched Eleanor. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and finish this episode up right here, guys. I hope you enjoyed. 
Uh, go ahead and hit that like button down below and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and you want to see more of me babbling about my crap. All right, have a good one, guys. Bye.